All right, so today's cocktail was called a bare knuckle boxer, and one of our viewers named Robert Lowry asked me a question about it. He said, I saw the uh, recipe for this cocktail called a bare knuckle boxer, and it calls for a salt syrup. Is that just simple syrup with salt in it? Which I'm assuming that's what salt syrup would be. I've never tried to make salt syrup, never heard of salt syrup. Uh, salt goes in cocktails all the time, not usually in syrup form, but it got me really intrigued about what this drink was. So I started doing some research and uh, I have to be honest that even though I'm a pretty big gamer and I like to play video games, uh, I have not actually played the game that this video, that this drink comes from. So this drink, uh, the Bare Knuckle Boxer, comes from uh, the game Hitman Paris. Now, I played the first Hitman installment, but I have not played any subsequent installments. Uh, so everything that I'm going to tell you about it comes from research that I did, just FYI, because I'm just kind of a bad fanboy right now. Um, but basically, uh, the drink is part of a, um, a mission where the uh, hitman, Agent 47, uh, sees a drink recipe uh, through the scope of his gun and basically has to infiltrate this party, find the drink recipe, go to the bar, make the recipe, and serve it to his target and obviously poison it because he is the hitman. It's, it's, he's not just, it's not called the bartender, right? He's not gonna make him a drink and the guy's gonna be like, ooh, this is a lovely drink. No, the guy's gonna die because the guy's a hitman. You seemed like you were gonna say something, Marius. Yeah, why, why did he see the recipe through his uh, scopes? Well, that's what I really can't figure out because he definitely sees the recipe through the scope of a gun, but then in the episode, uh, like, oh, sorry, in the, in the, in the, in game. the, uh, the game, the game, well, it's, it's called the showstopper mission. So in the mission, he actually finds the recipe in the basement, right? which is weird. So how would he have seen it through the scope of a rifle in the basement of this? Like, it's like in the kitchen, basement kitchen of this place. I don't know. I could be wrong. I haven't played the game. I almost wanted to buy it and play through the show, like play through the game, but I, I didn't think I had enough time and I really wanted to get this. And I found out another little piece of information which I thought was really interesting. So when you look at the recipe for what a bare knuckle bro boxer is in the game, it says that it's two ounces of rum and then it's one ounce of vodka, one ounce of orange juice and a pinch of salt. And when I looked at that recipe, I knew exactly what it was. The cocktail, that utilizes those ingredients in almost those same proportions is called a Brass Monkey. And the Brass Monkey was a bottled cocktail developed by a company called the Hublin Company. So the Hublin Company was a drinks company that was uh, established in 1862 and they made bottled cocktails. And in the 1970s and 1980s, they made a uh, cocktail called a Brass Monkey that they served at nightclubs. And they said that it was a secret mix of um, it was a secret mix of uh, fruit juices and they wouldn't say, they were very secretive about the ingredients, but uh, basically the cocktail, the brass monkey that emerged from that is literally, uh, it's actually equal parts rum, vodka, and orange juice uh, shaken and strained into a pint glass or a Collins glass with some ice. So obviously I'm gonna be reconstructing this recipe a bit. I'm not going to be making the, you know, uh, brass monkey version, although I'm super stoked that I get to reconstruct a drink that was immortalized by the Beastie Boys because the Beastie Boys, if you watch that new Spike Jones documentary, Beastie Boys Story, they actually mention that in the beginning of their career when they were making the rounds to all the clubs and they were just starting to get popular, they would be going to the nightclubs and drinking brass monkeys. So I thought it was pretty cool. You guys should definitely watch that documentary. It's on Apple Plus and it's awesome. All right, let's get into actually making this drink. So this is my own reconstructed version. Uh, for the orange juice, I decided to use blood orange because A, it's a little tartar, it's not as sweet, and B, it is a Hitman drink, so why not use blood orange? Um, it's not gonna be served in a Collins glass, it's gonna be served in a nice fancy glass because um, that's uh, kind of close to the glass that the Agent 47 hit, uh, hands to his target when you complete the mission. All right, let's get into it. So first thing we're gonna do is half an ounce of lemon juice because we're gonna add a little acid in there. Uh, then we're going to do half an ounce of simple syrup. Then we're going to do one ounce of blood orange juice. All right. Then we're going to do half an ounce of orange curacao. You just want to add a little bit of dryness into there. 
I'm literally just putting this vodka in it because it's in the original recipe and I want to stay true to it. So I'm literally just doing half an ounce. Just, just because. And then so it does not, sp what? I mean, you're so far off the original specs anyway. Why, why even include oh, the vodka? Just because like, I don't know. You just, I feel like I have to pay homage, homage anyway. I said homage, now everyone's going to bust me. I feel like I have to pay homage to the original. So I just feel like it just had to go in there anyway. I'm going to use white rum because A, it doesn't specify what kind of rum. B, I didn't want to like overpower it with like Jamaican rum or, you know, it just seems like this needs to be like a nice easy cocktail. So I'm just going to do an ounce and a half of the Plantation Three Star. Um, this is going to be a pretty voluminous drink. So I'm hoping that our glass uh, was chosen well. Then we're just going to add it all to, to our shaker. Give it a nice hard shake. And then we are going to strain into our glass. Oh, pretty good. Not the greatest wash line. It's kind of close to the top. It'll give me some sipping room. And then uh, I've just got this dehydrated uh, wheel. It's a lemon wheel uh, because, I mean, it is Hitman and that thing's dead. So I just figured, I don't know. It just kind of played into the theme a little. Uh, let's take a sip. I mean, it's not the most complex. Um, oh, I forgot what I was doing with this. Sorry, guys. You probably want to do this when it's in the shaker, but... Maybe that's why it's not so complex. This is a saline solution. It's just a 20% uh, percent saline solution. And I'm just going to add a couple drops in there. You want to do it in the shaker. I forgot to do it. And I, I refuse to, to redo this episode, so... Put it in the shaker. The salt is going to open up a lot of the flavors in here, but I just added it in there anyway. And the original did call for a little oh. pinch of salt in there, right? So you can also just put a pinch of salt in there if you don't want to make saline solution. I mean, it's nice, you know? It's like just enough simple syrup to balance out the lime. You get a very, you get a, a lot of that like uh, blood orange in there. Um, I like that I put the curacao in there because it dried it out kind of nice. The vodka is adding a little bit more proof and then you kind of can feel the rum in there. The main flavor profile of this is going to be the blood orange with the dried out curacao. Um, it's a very nice drink. It's not the most complex thing I've ever made in my life, but it's pretty good. And uh, the saline uh, is going to open up the flavors in it, but it's not going to make it more complex, but it's nice. So what I found a little bit confounding though is that when the Hitman gives his target the, the cocktail, now that we know what the recipe is, it's green. So I'm wondering like how, if it, it's like this. First of all, how does something with orange juice become then green? But then if it's green and the poison made it green, wouldn't the target know that there was something wrong with it if that was the target's favorite drink? Right, but maybe it's just uh, the color grade of the game. It just looks green for the viewer. Oh, like possibly. The lighting in the club. Which is maybe oh, maybe the lighting in the club. I know. I, I, I did. It, it was like a, a bar with a light on the bar, right? So it was like one of those nightclubs that has like a, like a, like a, a white bar that has illuminated from the bottom, I think. So it illuminates the glasses and make them look more sexy, I guess. I don't know. I mean, maybe that had something to do with it. I still don't know how you take something that's basically orange and make it look green with lighting, but maybe I'm wrong. I would think that if you added all sorts of lighting to orange, it would just look sort of brown or something. I don't know. Uh, probably best not to think too, too hard on this one. So there it is, guys, the Bare Knuckle Boxer. Uh, if you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon, and then check us out on YouTube memberships. We're actually gonna be porting our uh, Patreon over to YouTube. Uh, we're gonna be doing a long drawn out thing. So really, if you wanna become a member, go over to YouTube. Uh, and then Marius, when he gets off his behind, is going to be adding a PayPal donation link if you just want to make a one-time donation, or if you want to make a reoccurring donation just straight to us without any member perks, you just want to like help out the show, you're going to have that as well. And then we've got something very new and exciting. So a lot of people have been asking about how to 
how to, how to buy us bottles. And it's been a little bit difficult just because we can't just put our home addresses out in the world. So what we decided to do was kind of do a buy a bottle program where on our website, you'll have a list of bottles that are kind of on a wish list and uh, they have the price next to it. And then you can just like put that in the cart and then it'll PayPal us the money and then we'll just go out and buy that bottle for our collection. We'll put a tag on the bottle with your name on it and then we will, so that we can remember who you are. And then we will shout you out in whatever episode your um, cocktail is made on. And if you want to uh, do cocktail suggestions that I may or may not follow, you can give us a suggestion and maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't, but uh, it is a possibility. So I think that's pretty exciting. Yeah, and if this sounds a little familiar, yes, that is like the Steve's... Uh, yeah, I mean, part. we're kind of taking this model, I think, from Steve a little bit, but that's okay because yeah. um, weird. It? It's, it's just weird that a lot of people want us to buy us things, and I really appreciate it that people want to buy us these spirits, and it really does help us out a lot. It helps us with the cost of the show, uh, but there's no real good way of doing it because you can't send booze to a P.O. box because someone that's 21 or older has to be there to uh, get it. And then also um, it's not legal to send booze through UPS or anything unless you have a license. So it's all kind of a difficult thing to do, but we would love to have that booze that helps us out. So if you just buy it on our site and then we can just go and buy it from our vendors, then yeah, no, you you're can... getting us a bottle you know we need. Uh, we really appreciate it though. And we just wanna make uh, like a nice streamlined way of getting us bottles if you want to. Uh, we'll shout you out in the episode and uh, so just to summarize, it's virtual bottles that you can buy on our website. And uh, when you buy it, your name will be added to the bottle. So there might be multiple people buying on, because if 20 people buy us one specific bottle, we won't buy 20 bottles necessarily. We won't buy 20 bottles necessarily, but the money will go toward to buying boost. things that we need. Yeah. So, but your name will go on the bottle that you intended to purchase. So. If everyone buys us a bottle of beef eater, right? 40 people buy us a bottle of beef eater. We're not gonna buy 40 bottles of beef eater because that's crazy. But what we'll do is put 40 names on that bottle of beef eater and then we will use all the other money that they sent to buy bottles that we need. Either way, it's going to booze, guys. So anyway, I don't know. This episode is long enough as it is, but I wanted to get out all of this exciting news and partially I wanted to get it out because when I say it on a video, then Marius has to do it. <laughs> all right, guys, I'll see you guys on another time.